So again, uh, welcome. This is this is Cecilia. I am coming into it. This is as you see, this is my first time doing a Facebook Live. Um, but I hope you will uh, have the next um, thirty minutes or so enjoying my demonstration. Um, this is a web felting demonstration. I'm going to run. Um, is uh, a little bit different from what I normally do. I do uh, needle felting, but sometimes I will combine web felting because I believe it is a, a great option and also it can create a little bit different result. Um, so I am the instructor at the um, GCCA since the beginning. Uh, so happy birthday to uh, GCCA, it's the fifth birthday. And um, as I recall, I made this web felting piece five years ago. Um, so it was in the beginning exhibitions and I was trying to demonstrate a different things about felting and what can be created with felting. So uh, here, this is the uh, green pre felt that I made. I add some different texture with different surface designs and the whole thing is made out of wool. So basically, wet felting is an ancient technique. We use a uh, natural wool fiber and then by uh, adding water and soap and with some agitations, with change of the temperature, and we can combine all the wool together and turn them into a one piece of seamless fabric. And then um, lately people are using more like a different type of felting. We call it the needle felting. That is a newer type of felting we use um, because the needle is actually coming from factory that they have um, needles to uh, keep poking and attaching the needle. Um, so there are different ways to do it. But I love actually combining both. And you can see some different results of that too. So this is one quick example, and this is a uh, complete felt that I made. So everything is going through the felting process, everything uh, finished through that, uh, I call them felt. Um, so this is a felted cloth or tablecloth that I make. Um, um, as you can see, I put in all the color that I use, and these are very colorful, and this is my palette. Um, so this is all done with wet felting. You can see that the design is a more like an abstract painting. But when we apply needles with the needle felting, this tiny dot that I add, they are all uh, we create with needle felting by poking. And so I can create shapes and line and different pattern. So the, the design is more precise. Um, so you can see the differences. And when we need a felt, a lot of time when we poke through, then you can see the color going to the back. But when I combine the two, like this hooster, I use a uh, start off with needle felting, kind of similar like this, how I start off. So lay out and blending different colors. And then I add wet felting on top. So you can see the color will blend in all together rather than individual. And the bonus part is when we need a felt, the pattern will go through the back size. But when we add the wet felting and I add in some extra water back, you can see I hide everything at the back. So um, it's kind of a great option. I can create the both sided pattern. Just earlier I have created um, some samples with the four parts. So this four part, I start up with just needle felting. So I have my two right here. So um, if I just lay out the wool and then I just keep this needle felted, it will take me a long time to get everything go through. And you can see the color is starting to push to the back if I keep punching and attaching the fiber. So this is the needle felting. But when I add a wet felting, so earlier I did a wet felting, exactly the same one. I add the wet felting process. What happened? You can see that all the color will be all blend together. So you can comparing the two. And also, it, when we need a felt, there are chances we might miss certain spot. But when we wet felt it, the whole piece of felt will be combined together and the color kind of match together 
uh, more. And at the back, I just add a little samples that you can do double-sided. So by needle felting, you can be hide. But when you wet felting, we can combine and we can add extra design at the back. So then um, you can get a double-sided um, coaster uh, to lay out on the coffee table or you just hang it up at the window just like my hoster, I can just hand it up in different ways so that people can see different idea. So that is the differences between the needle felting and wet felting. And in terms of wood, and that's my lovely ship, always come with me. Um, in terms of the wood that I use, I use primarily uh, New Zealand uh, wool from the company called Ashford, which makes spinning wheels. So they have their own ship farm in New Zealand. Um, so they have their own color chart. So I use this and primarily I use carry down sheep wool for my needle felting project. So they are really bright and vibrant. I love the color and lots of blending the color to create my project. But I primarily use uh, merino wool for my uh, wet felting project because merino wool the, is more fine. It's about 22 micron compared with curry dao have about 30 micron. It's still fine because they are actually made for people to uh, spin and turn them into yarn and for people to make a uh, sweater or scarf for people to wear. So all this wool I use is really uh, fine and next to skin. So there are a few things um, I would like to share. Because when I share in the classroom, I also share about the science, also the history of wool and why wool can felt and why natural wool from the sheep is much better. Because if you look closely, this is a diagram that I showed most of my students. So this is on the wool fiber under the microscope. And you can see there are little scales along the fiber and they are pretty important if they have more it's kind of like lego it has the interlocking uh property allow the lego block to lock together so think about wool is same if they have a lot of scales it allow them it interlock and they will tangle together and stick together much better and that's why wool can felt but when there are like wooden blocks they have flat surface they don't have any interlocking system so if it's you have a plastic that is man-made with just straight fiber or even certain type of plant they don't have much of these scales uh, like the um the merino wool or uh, other type of animal wool like uh, goat um, they will provide the cashmere or the angora goat as well um, so they are the more hair so then they all have lock but for certain plants like silk they might not have as much as many scale that so they won't attach together as good but when we combine so these are the color i have posted online for those people interested and thank you for many of you coming in to pick up the color so you can work along together so these are the blend of the merino wool and silk so the mulberry silk it gives some shininess so um, then it can create beautiful um, project so right now i'm going to show you quickly some examples that um, some of you, if you're interested to do more later on in the workshop at GCCA or at the summer camp, there are a few different things like, like a uh, felt soap. So a lot of people cover the uh, soap with wool. It's great. It hit on the hand. It's also exfoliate really good. Um, and other people will make dryer ball from there. And actually, if it's 100% wool dryable, it takes about 100 gram. So think about how much it could shrink. Um, so there are uh, puppets, a few of my first and second grade, uh, as I also teach at the school through the Smart Art Program under Metropolitan Art Council. So I make the, the student can make some puppets to play with, to create the character, to make stories about it. So then um, it is kind of created with a resist so people can keep put the finger inside and hold it. So this can will be done in the summer camp or other uh, wet felting workshop that I'm going to conduct. Like a case, as you can see, we can create a seamless pocket or a purses without any stitching, without any sewing. That is the fun thing with wet felting. We're not only just making a one piece of flat surface, but also we can make pockets. 
this was my iPhone 4 cases many years ago, but now it could only fit my car in it. So, and here I combine needle felting. So I love to combine multiple way to, uh, to do my project. And plus wood is extremely durable. I made this 10 years ago. I combined all different wool balls. This is all merino wool. I combined all, including my necklace. The whole thing is not more than 100 gram. And it was showcased in a fashion show um, um, maybe five, six years ago in Vancouver. So I'm glad that it's been worn by a model. But besides flat surface, we can create dimensions. So these are the flowers. And you can see that you can see the shine from the flowers. These are coming from the silk. So under the sunlight, it will shimmers. So besides making the flower, we can also make um, other things through Nuno felting. It's just kind of part of the wet felting. Nuno felting is allow us to combine uh, merino and silk chiffon. So this, I work on a silk chiffon with this Nuno felted uh, scarf. So this is also a workshop I will be teaching um, in the com upcoming months. Hopefully everything will be good like soon. And so it can be really lightweighted. I have some students already took this class with me and they enjoy making with me. It's just a one day class for six hours. Or like I can add more wood, so make it more for um, winter time, but it's still combined with silk. And this one you can see the shininess. So here, um, a lot of, one more examples is the geode, which I do more lately. So you can see the whole piece. We can make much larger scale than just a small piece of um, fabric. But today we are going to create a small washcloth. I'm going to get an examples. Yesterday I make a small one. So you, for those who have 20 gram of a merino and silk, you'll be able to make your own washcloth or a coaster, or you can frame it up like a uh, wall art is up to you. And this is 100% wool. You can wash it and clean it um, anytime you want to. Okay, let me put these uh, things away. And for those who are going to join me today to work on this wet felting process, the little project, we will go start together. All right. I will reply your questions a little bit later because um, it's a little bit hard for me to reply right away, but I will reply your uh, questions. And thank you for coming and checking out today's um, demo. So now let's start off with some important thing. You need a towel. I almost forgot about this. We need a towel because you're going to work with water. Um, by preventing it slip around, I love to use this kitchen liner so it will kind of keep everything in place. So I will put my project right here and on top, but first with the towel. So in case you spilled anything, um, that can be uh, fixed. And I'm going to lower this down and you can see a little bit better from this angle. So you have the towel and uh, you will need you get an extra lint liner that's even perfect i love that because it keeps everything in place um i put down optional as a bubble wrap some people love to work on the bubble wrap um you can do that and or sometimes i would just prefer working on a tray with my with another liner on top just a regular tray so i work on it and I have put down a Ziploc bag, which you might want to use it. Sometimes at school, I don't have none of the tray or bubble wrap. I will just have them work within the Ziploc bag. So I'm gonna start off with this one too. And the other two things we might need is uh, the soap because we need some uh, way to change the pH level or to open up the scales. So either using an olive oil soap, which I usually work that with my Nuno felting project, um, but I, we can also use just regular uh, liquid detergent as well. So that too, we have that. And one more thing we might need is the bamboo mat. Um, so either a sushi mat or like a place mat that is made out of bamboo, 
both work. It's just allow us to roll and work the project together. If you really don't have need anything, you may use a longer, maybe 12 inch, uh, longer wooden pin that might help too. Let me put this right here. And um, you also want to have a clear water bottle um, that's just to uh, store enough water uh, that is, I would say, some warm to hot water as long as you can handle it. Um, on top, you might please uh, get some little tiny hole or you could just use your finger and you are going to sprinkle the water so it's not the hole, like not too much water at the same time. And some people will use net and plastic wrapping, but I will show that why, how we can use that. And the other two thing is if you have them, it's just like a thin plastic glove. If you don't have that, you can easily just grab some um, um, garbage, uh, grocery, plastic, and I just tied, I just put it all together and tie with a elastic band and just keep them on. You can use this to wrap the project. So right now I am going to bring out my bigger tray so you all can see better. Sure. So now we are going to work with about um, 200 gram, um, not 200, sorry, 20 gram of wool. So that's how much, that is how much for 20 gram and I was selling that $5 each. And that will be enough to make your washcloth that's in this size. So I, um, I find out a lot of people love the green. This time I have many people pick up the green, but I am going to make multiple colors. So I have uh, 10 gram, uh, I'll be do uh, 10 gram of green and I will mix in uh, maybe an, a five gram of red and then another five gram of yellow. So then you will um, get to see this is about the 20 gram. So you can see multiple layers because when we create the uh, layering, uh, we, we create not just one layer. We need to do at least maybe four layers, sometimes even more, depends how thick you want. So I'm going to show you how it works. So there you have this wool. And this is how you start. So if you are ready, you have your liner. Uh, maybe you can put a piece of paper. It's just a guideline and also have to pick it up and insert everything you work on afterward on top of the, um, the Ziploc bag. So we're going to work within the Ziploc bag. So we're going to pull. So this is how it starts. You will kind of grab with your hand like this and gently cuff over it and then you pull and you will have a thin layers of fiber and you're going to line it. So we're going to line it like in a row. So we're going to start from one end. I'm going to go into face this your size so you can see better this way. And then I will start off with my second row. I will overlap a little bit. So then it will help to keep them all together. And then my third row. So this is my size for my project. And then my last row, I will keep rowing. I will just turn this way. And then you see about five gram, I can cover one layer. So this is maybe my bottom layer of my pre felt like this. If I start off, it will be the bottom layer. Okay. Then when you work on your next layer, we are not going into the same direction because we are not weaving, we are not uh, knitting. Uh, with felting, we actually is a, we call it a non-woven fabric. 
So we are not going to a exactly certain pattern to kind of map the wool together. We can lay out many different ways, but best is we're going to skip follow the different directions like the vertical and then I will go horizontal. So now it's one trick. You might find it, oh, I'm not sure I can pull out the wool as easy. Um, there is one trick is you can separate the wool in half so you're not holding too much. So you can pull it like this the same way and I start off with the bottom going into a horizontal directions. So I can do that one. Or you could do it in another direction is like you can put this work down and have your hand holding and pull. You can do that, that might help. So there are different ways. do it the other way so now I'm going to finish off with this so now this is my second layer you can see the first layer I had it in the top uh, the top to bottom direction and now I have my second one from one side to the other side left or right so then we can um, create my second layer and sometimes you might not want to use this beautiful wool and because it will end up hidden within. So when you work on your cloth, your pattern, you will have your bottom one showing and the top one showing, but everything in between, it will be hidden. So some people might want to use some uh, maybe less expensive um, wool, like just uh, maybe merino wool instead of no silk that has been included inside. Um, so it depends what your project. And sometimes if I work with Corridale sheep wool, I might hide some color that I might not want to see. But there are also other projects you want to show some hidden color in which as at the end you want to create a special service design. Um, so you want to hide some certain color, it's gonna give you a, a surprise color of afterward. Um, so you can, you can also create this. So there's a lot of uh, different options when you we work with wet felting. So this is my second layer. I'm trying to touch up different spots that I think I'm gonna miss. I just want to finish up my second five gram of color wool in red. So now I'm going to add my um, third layer. So I'm going to add my green. Green is one of the popular color I find at this time. I have uh, five students pick up the wool today. They are all green. And if you open this blended wool, it has multiple color in it. But I'm not going to just lay everything down because sometimes it's good you have like uh, pull them out because as you pull more, you will increase the chances it's going to catch with other wool together. So it will um, blend together a little bit better. So I, we're going to back to the horizontal, uh, the vertical. I have horizontal for the red and I'm going back to vertical. So I'm going to add this vertical back up here. And then I'm going to overlap. So pulling is a little bit, um, the wool is a little bit um, something that you need to practice and you, as you practice more, you will get better. So this is my um, third layer. And my last layer, I'm thinking I'm going to add some uh, special pattern. So I'm going to add my yellow in it. The yellow will be, I'm going to create a certain pattern, but not necessarily will be in, um, in the same vertical or horizontal direction because it's the fourth layer already. So I'm going to add a few pattern like here, but I open up and trying to create a, a few pattern. And I can mix color as well. I can mix and blend different color if I wish to. So. So first I'm going to add this. 
and I'm going to add a hint of purple inside so that you can create a nice pattern out from this beautiful merino and silk and I add back a field of the red uh, yellow color on top if you don't if you don't want to mix you can create some abstract painting just depends what you like if I don't like it here I can switch and change or I could kind of like a changing a little directions and change and create like that I want to add a little bit more color right here and there so it's very relaxing uh, for a uh, wet felting just by laying down the wall and trying to create your design that you want to get at the end so it's just um, it's very I call it an active meditations so there you go so this um, I'm gonna add a tiny little bit because at the bottom I have my um, green and then um, I want to add a little bit of this light color just to highlight the, the frame just create a frame for this painting kind of like a flower all right okay so this is how we start with the layering so after layering we need to start our project we need to uh, start to add the um, soap to change the pH level and we need to add some uh, warm water um, to it and then we, we need to start the wet felting process so first if you already have this paper holding at the bottom you can put on nicely inside your ziplock bag and then you can slide everything out so you have your pattern nicely keep inside right here if you if you're not using a ziplock bag we can do is we can have the um, polyester liner this polyester fabric is not going to attach the wool because polyester is man-made material it do not have the scales as I mentioned before it won't attach with the wool so that's um, that's today I'm not using that I'm going to keep it in here so everybody will use work on a similar project like me so then next I'm going to add the detergent you don't need a lot just a few sprinkle just like like this just a little bit right here you don't need a lot you don't want to create a lot of bubbles and then the next thing you will want to add water so I have some uh, boiling water adding in into a, a half bottle of uh, room temperature water so I know uh, how much how much heat that I can handle so if this one's pretty good so as long as you can handle the the heat that will work fine so now I'm going to spray water inside So you might want to kind of zip up the ziplock bag so then in case of any water spill and now you're going to press but not too tight because you can release some air but you have to keep press it down so you need to press down and make all the water soak by the wool because you have a lot of wool earlier so I am adding pressure to make sure it is all wet if you feel that like this there are certain part that is not uh, wet I'm gonna add some more water so by this I am actually starting to felt the wool 
we need to add pressure and for an idea like how wet fountain like it's like if you put a wool sweater into a washer dryer when it bring you bring the wool sweater out after that what happened is shrink so that is the same process like that so if you have this you may start to rub like this or if you have everything is together you can pick up a glove or you may also use the plastic bag so i'm going to take this out so you can see a little bit better and how it looks like without the ziplock bag so right now so this is how it start and there are still some part are still not wet enough so add more so this was the plastic bag that you can just tie together and you can use it as a resources to press and hold and then once it's all nicely attached no more fuzzy wool and it stay wet you might gently starting to rub as you rub it you're adding some agitation the wool will start to shrink and you can see the bubbles starting to show as well if you're still working within the uh, bubble wrap the, uh, the ziplock bag you can put your hand inside or you keep your hand outside to start the rubbing so you will keep to do the rubbing for quite some time as I'm trying to speed up what I'm going to do I'm going to add my net and with my tools that will have to speed up so you can see the following steps so with this I can use my glove to use my hand to rub your cloth. So you're making your fabric yourself and you see as I rub harder, it will starting to mat together better. You can change different directions and make sure you work on the corners and the edges, not just the center. So it's a workout. <laughs> But it was fun because you're going to make your own fabric by hand. And right here you can flip to the other end. And I can start rubbing a little bit more. You can even put your hand just inside a, a plastic bag to rub it because with the plastic it helped so without the net it can it works too but the net will have to keep everything in place right in the beginning but after they starting to felt nicely together you see it will be fine it's going to stick together more so how to find out when it is ready so I'm going to put this away. When we think that it looks kind of stick together, we have a pinch test. So you have your finger holding and trying to see, oh, you can see that some of the wool is still coming up, which means it is not quite wet. So I'm going to need to rub a little bit more, harder. adding more pressure to it so if you can standing up you can add more pressure as you rub this project a little bit more and you can go rub it different directions all right 
now let's see now it's much better you can see that if i push it down it is not coming up as easy so this is starting to to do well starting to felt so now usually i would go to the sink and rinse out the um the bubbles but here I'm going to do this part a little bit faster without doing that. But I have my bamboo mat for me to start to roll. So the mat allow us to agitate the wool even more and it will shrink. Um, the piece and everything will be more, the wool will be more tightened together. So we're gonna start off with one this end. I roll this up and we are going to roll it 50 times. One, two. The way we are rolling it, we are trying to um, get all the wool to shrink this way. So it will shrink as we roll it like it for 50 times. And then once we're done with this part, we're going to rotate because we want to go this side. And because we roll here, we are going to work well on along the long side. And next, we're going to rotate again to work on the other side again so there are four sizes each size about 50 times and every time i roll i adding pressure as well so there's 200 times on one side and once it started to uh felt together nicely you can see it shrink a lot that means you are creating the felt correctly and you can see all the wool stick together really really nice switch hand and next we do it all on the front side you can see the wool is cutting to roll upward and we want to make sure it stay flat so I'm going to work on my back side as well rolling up so it depends how the result you had uh, as you roll. You might adjust it, you might not need to roll as many, or you might want to make sure it felt really, really nice. So you might want to uh, roll more, more than just 50 times. So it all depends um, and the type of wool that you used. It also uh, create a big um, change big difference in the result and in terms of the wool when I work with wool I know what type of ships that I'm working with what kind of ship wool I'm working with so I know I work with merino because I know that it will felt nicely together and it's like a fine fabric but when you purchase certain type of felting wool online they might not stay that what kind of in, uh, con, uh, ingredient because there are times the felting wool, they are actually combine some synthetic fiber in it, which don't allow you to felt. Um, they use those synthetic fiber felt inside the factory where they have thousands of needles poking through and they can make the commercial felt or craft felt. That's even sometimes it's recycled material. So for those who are really want to work on something, um, you don't want to spend extra times, um, and working with good quality material look for the um, wool content make sure they are coming for a certain type of ship and all different ships will give you different micron size so we look at the micron size when we work on a project so now so after all the felting it looks pretty well together right now and um, the other one more step for us to do is to fooling it so f-u-l-l-i-n-g the fooling basically we want to add extra shock 
so then the wool will stick together so um, if your wool is now pretty dry if you have work on the towel it might when you roll it might get dry so I might add a little bit water back onto my project and give it a little damp so then I, I do I'm going to roll it up and I'm going to this is fooling so you can release all your frustration through this and it is fun it's going to shock the wool and at the end the wool felt will be nice and compact and stick together very very well so I'm sometimes I will float about like 30 to 100 times depends what type of project what kind of result you want to get but right now I think I probably made 20 times you can see that the flower is starting to have this little bubbles is uh, coming up it's not flat so this is how you see the wool has been trying to tighten together furthermore not just by rolling or felting as I rub with my hand or with the bamboo mat but as I float so certain area when was a heating heart on the table that it will create this little bubble so I can do more and after I find it oh it's kind of not even I would leave that row it up but sometimes certain project you want to make it uneven and make it a very interesting texture service on top so right once I roll it up you have this and also um, you can iron steam uh, with iron and then usually I will let my air dry so if you want to wash this just like regular uh, wool fabric that you do and you can uh, wash it with um, uh, by hand by hand soap um, so that you will create your own washcloth so I now I have my second washcloth the first one I make is more like an abstract geo like uh, just like um, I make my very big version a couple weeks ago with my larger uh, scales and then now I have my um, smaller piece so I hope you enjoy these demonstrations and if you have any questions you're welcome to um, contact me and I have my Facebook page on Fantastic Fashions or you can join my um, GCC workshops um, in the next few months I always uh, will put out a, a weekend workshops once per month at least so there will be a wet felting in June a needle felting combined with wet felting late May and also in July and also the summer camp for the student so hope to see you again sometimes maybe in the um, art school open house and um, but anyway I'm sure you will have a good time working out along with me and I hope you enjoy this time, uh, this live demo. And check out um, this Friday, there will be another uh, GCCA demo. So check all out again. You have a good day. Thank you. Stay well.